Hello and welcome to the Chateau de la Lande. For those of you who don't watch my weekly vlog, I'm Stephanie. I'm the Chatelaine of this 16th century French chateau in the very heart of France. I already have a vlog that goes out every Thursday, which just follows our chateau life here. And I thought it would be really nice for those of you who've been kind enough to comment and been asking lots of questions about life here, for us to sit down together and have a cup of tea on a Sunday and I can answer any questions that you have. So welcome to Sundays at the Chateau. And I thought I'd start at the very beginning with a question that I'm probably asked the most, which is how and why did I come to be living in a chateau in the first place? Well, the first thing is why I wanted to live in a chateau. And that's really hard for me to answer because I've just always wanted to live in a chateau. It seems like the most obvious thing to want in the world, but I guess other sane people don't want their home to become their entire life. <laughs> but I had this fairy tale vision of life from the moment I was a little girl. My mother stopped reading to me when I was three years old. She said to me, you can read on your own now, Stephanie. If I read to you, you won't learn. These are your books, get on with it. And I was so cross that I would stare at the book and just look at the pictures and tell myself I'm not going to read it because then she'll win. I still remember this. But the pictures were so beautiful that it was frustrating me too much. I wanted to know everything. I wanted to know every detail about the dress and the prince and the chateau. I must have read every single day. And it seemed like every little girl would want to grow up and live in a chateau and that that would be a natural thing to do. And something that reinforced the fact that this was a possibility and this is what people did in their lives is that when I was six years old, my parents moved us from a bungalow in the north of England to a stately home. They had bought an abandoned mansion to turn it into a nursing home for people with Alzheimer's because they were both psychiatric nurses. We arrived and there were only my mother, my father, my brother Gerald and myself there. And everything needed doing. Obviously I was too young to help, but I watched the three of them by themselves renovate it room by room and bring it back to glory. At the time, stately homes in England were considered white elephants. Like, why would anybody buy one? And in fact, it's a similar attitude today in France. My parents believed though that beauty is very, very good for the soul and that even people with advanced stages of Alzheimer's would respond well to being in an environment that was extremely beautiful and calm and peaceful. And I think they were absolutely right about that. I think beauty is good for everybody. And that is why they chose to risk everything that they had to move to a wildly impractical building and make something beautiful for the residents in their care. I grew up surrounded by obviously a lot of eccentricity and a lot of people, there were never fewer than 30 people in the home that I was living in. We lived in the attic and the residents were downstairs. And it was wonderful. This is my father's painting of that incredibly beautiful house where I spent such a happy childhood. And there you can see me in pink playing in the garden. And so a big house that was beautiful and that I could restore just as my parents had restored Cransford Hall was really important to me. It was my dream. So fast forward many years and I go to university and I meet my best friend, the elusive Nick, who never appears in the video unless he's got a paper bag over his head because he's so shy. And the first time I met Nick, I said to him, one day we're going to buy a chateau together. And he thought I was a crazy person. So fast forward a few more years, we've finished university and I'm living in London in a small two bedroom flat. And my friend Nick is also living in London in another two bedroom flat. And one day we were saying, it's just ridiculous that friends don't pool their resources, that people only buy houses with their partners and start nuclear families. If we sold both of our flats, we could get a little terraced house in London with a garden, it would be 10 times nicer. So he agreed and told me to put both of our houses on the market and start looking for a place that we could live in and renovate together. And I started looking and it was actually quite depressing what we could afford with everything we had in the world. And I knew that for the same price as that, which I'll be completely open, um, at the time was £590,000. That was our absolute limit. And I said to him, it's madness because you can buy a chateau in France for the price that I'm looking at derelict terraced houses in London. And one day at dinner, he just said, 
Well, you know what? Go and look in France. I'm going to speak to work tomorrow. And if they let me work from home remotely, then we'll move to France. And I couldn't believe it. And anyone who knows Nick would know that that's quite out of character, actually. I went with my parents and I just started looking at every chateau in our price range in the whole of France and other places. I was, it was a joy. It's a joy. I mean, honestly, house hunting for a chateau is one of the most pleasurable things you can do. It's like going around a museum and being told you, you've got the opportunity to buy to buy it <laughs> at the end. And I loved, I loved the places. We saw amazing places. But the thing is, our price range was quite small uh, for a chateau. And so most of the places that I saw were either beautiful chateaus, but right next to a motorway, or one of them, it was in an industrial estate. You had to go through two supermarket car parks to get into the front gate. It was things like that, problems like that with every single chateau. Or one, they were only selling half of the chateau and the owners would be staying in the other half. And I was being told by the estate agents that I was being too picky and that I would never find what I wanted. And I was beginning to think that maybe the estate agents were right and this grand chateau that I was looking for wasn't available in our price range until one day I turn up to look at a chateau in the very heart of France. And as I drove up the drive with my parents, as soon as I saw Lalande, I said to my father, oh, this is it, we found it, that I can stop looking now. And he said, but you haven't been inside yet. And I just explained, well, the interior you can change. There's, there's nothing to disturb the beauty of this place. There are no major roads here. It's just countryside as far as the eye can see. It's completely unspoilt. And while it has turrets, what more does a woman want in life? As I walked in, walked into the entrance hall, and you go straight through the entrance hall onto the terrace on the other side, and I saw the chapel. Well, and that was it. There's no talking me out of it after that. So I immediately arranged a second viewing and on the second viewing, I made an offer of the full asking price, which was exactly the amount of money that we had, 590,000 pounds. That is the only full asking price offer I think I've ever made in my life, but I knew I wanted it. And I don't know what made me do that, but it's the luckiest thing I've ever done as well, because the very next day, a French family put an offer in on Lalande, also of the full asking price. And at the time, this house was owned by a marquis whose family had been here for 200 years. Because they loved Lalande so much, they were hoping to sell it to a French family with children because they wanted it to carry on being a family home. And I was buying with my best friend and we had no children and there was nothing nuclear family about our setup. So the marquis phoned me He's one of the most honorable men I have ever met in my life. And he said to me, you know, I would prefer to sell to this other family, but because you were the first person to sign and you offered the full asking price, I feel that I'm honor bound to sell to you, but I would like you to reconsider. I think that you're so young, I was 29, you're imagining a fairy tale, you don't see the reality of it. And please come here and live in the chateau for a couple of days and experience the reality of it and maybe withdraw your offer so that I could sell to this other family. Well, this was remarkable, obviously, for two reasons. One, somebody is inviting me into their home so that I understand their house and have an opportunity to realise whether I truly love it or not before buying it. And two, he didn't go into a bidding war because that would have been dishonourable. He'd asked for a price, I'd offered the price and that was it. And they are two things that I will forever be grateful to him for. So my mother and I took him up on his offer and we came to stay at Lalande. And I slept in a bedroom, which many people since then have said they believe is haunted. I'll tell you more about our apparent ghost uh, another time if you'd like to hear more about that. Ghost didn't bother me at all. House was wonderful. I could see there were a thousand things to do and it wasn't glamorous, it was not comfortable, <laughs> but I loved it. I still love it. Um, I think this house and I were very, were bound together somehow. 
And so I told him, I still love the house and please let me buy it and I, I would be good to it. And he said that we could go ahead with the sale. So Nicholas flew out to sign the purchase contract. And I remember as we arrived in the courtyard, he was just like, what have we done? Because it, it feels really very big when you arrive. In fact, it's only one room deep all the way around. So it's a bit like a stage set, but it just feels overwhelming when you see it for the first time. And I think panic set in a little bit then. We thought it would take us five years to restore and then we could sell it and move on and do other projects in life. And at the end of five years, two things had become apparent. One, it would take a lifetime to restore and a heck of a lot more money than we actually had. And two, we were completely in love with the place and didn't want to sell it anyway. So then I had to find ways of being able to live here, which is why we started the Chample d'Art and the music workshops and any ways that we can find to bring in revenue to restore this home and to stay here. And that was all 14 years ago. Still here, not going anywhere. I'm very stubborn when it comes to this house. It doesn't matter how often we completely run out of money at the end of the month, I'll still be here. I guess one of the things I feel most passionately about in life is that together we are stronger. And I could never have done this on my own. I couldn't have bought it on my own. Neither could I have lived here and renovated it on my own. That's why I live with friends, with family. I have so many volunteers here that come from all over the world. For me, that's what makes life joyful, is sharing these experiences with other people and achieving 10 times more because we're together. Anyway, that's the story of how we came to live at La Land so long ago at the age of 29 and I'm going to stop myself there because honestly I could talk about chateaus and chateau life for hours because it's my passion and I love everything about life here but let me know in the comments if there's anything else that you would like to know about any other aspect of chateau life or french life feel free to ask me anything and then I'll pick out topics to talk to you about on other Sundays and if you love Chateau Life, then please subscribe and there'll be lots more about chateaus on this channel in future. Have a lovely Sunday. I let my tea get cold. <laughs>